The jack-o'-lantern chuckled, then winked his funny eye. I would rather be in pumpkin face than be inside a pie. Jolly Wally Pumpkin Face, you're happy, tell us why. I'd rather be a pumpkin face and not a pumpkin pie. Mr. McLean takes his knife and carves the yellow pumpkin face. Three holes bring eyes and nose to life. The mouth has 13 teeth in place. Then Mr. McLean, just for fun, transfers the corncob pipe from his dry mouth to Jack's and everyone dies laughing. Oh, what fun it is till Mr. McLean draws the shade and lights the candle in Jack's skull. Then all the inside dark is made as spooky and as powerful as Halloween and creepy crawl the shadow on the toolhouse floor with Jack's face dancing on the wall. Oh, Mr. McLean, where, where's the door? Ladies and gentlemen, greetings and welcome to a new lore chapter, the show where we go in-depth in the lore of any culture. I'm your host, Azelrix, and today, it's only a few days until Halloween. I love Halloween. The costumes, the culture, the colors, the candy you had to sneak in and out of your bag so your parents would not take them away so you would not get insomnia from too much sugar. When I was a kid, I actually made a deal with my mother. She would let me eat all the candy I wanted, but she had a veto on every single bar of Kit Kat I could get from Halloween. Every single one of them. And then Halloween, it's also the pumpkins. Everyone likes to carve pumpkins, even though every neighborhood has this little motherfucker who thinks he's Michelangelo, the painter, not the Ninja Turtle, and carves a masterpiece while you're happy with your three teeth smile. Yes, the smiles on the pumpkin. Everybody has carved a pumpkin, also called a jack-o'-lantern, without probably knowing what is the myth behind it. And that is the story that I'm gonna tell you today. I love this story. There is everything in it you need for a good narrative. The devil, danger, tricks, intelligence, and beer. Don't forget the beer. So once again, our story brings us to the Irish folklore, where we are gonna follow our main character, Stingy Jack. Jack was as far from an angel as you can be. He was an old man who liked to play prank on everybody around him, including friends and family. Even though you might disagree with his method, you have to appreciate how smart the guy was. He was indeed so smart that he managed to escape death itself. One night, the devil came to claim Jack's soul. He said that Jack had lived a life too sinful to end up anywhere but hell. In good old Irish tradition, Jack said that he would follow Satan, but he wanted to get one final drink before that. So the man and the fiend went to a local tavern to get some drinks. Having no money to pay, Jack asked the devil to transform into a coin that he would give to the barman. Afterward, the devil could just transform back into his original form and walk away with Jack's soul. The devil did turn into a coin, but instead of paying the bartender, Jack actually put the coin in his wallet. Wallet that was sealed by a crucifix. The devil was trapped. He could not exit the wallet and he could not transform back. So Jack and him made a deal. His soul shall remain untouched for the next 10 years and in exchange Jack would set him free. Lucifer was trapped. He could not exit the wallet whatsoever, so he had no choice but to accept Jack's deal. And that's how Jack made his first pact with the devil. 
Of course there are different versions of the legends, some say 1 year, some say 10 years. I'd rather prefer the 10 years version for two reasons. First of all, this is the version I was told as a kid. Then, it opens the possibility of Jack actually hoping to die in the following 10 years before Satan came to claim back his soul. And if this is the accurate version, well the second part of this legends gets much more interesting. So 10 years passed and the devil came for Jack's soul once again. Being an old man, Jack decided to follow the devil on one condition. He wanted to get one final apple for the trip. So they found an apple tree, but being an old man, Jack could not climb the tree and he asked the devil to climb it for him and bring him back the apple. Of course, it was the last will of an old man, so the beast accepted and he started to climb the tree. But while he was retrieving the apple, Jack carved a crucifix on the trunk of the tree, trapping the devil in the tree for good. Satan must have been pretty pissed at this point. It was the second time Jack that tricked him. So of course, they made a second deal. Jack would let the beast out of the tree if his soul remained untouched by him for all of eternity. Oh my god, can Jack give some advice to Sam and Dean from Supernatural on how to actually deal with the devil? No need for tricks, exorcism, cage or angels. You just need an apple tree and a beer. Anyways, you can imagine the devil, pretty pissed off that Jack had tricked him twice in a row, accepted the pact and let Jack live. So Jack's soul remained untouched. He had proven that he was smarter than the devil. Or was he? As you can imagine, no one escapes death forever, not even Jack. And this is a lesson that he learned the hard way. One day Jack died and his soul was elevated towards heaven, but having lived a sinful life full of alcohol, tricks and lies, Jack could not get into it. Jack was sent to hell, but having made the pact with the devil, his soul could not go through the gates. Satan, faithful to his word, told Jack that because he had no right on his soul, he was condemned to wander the world all alone as a ghost. You can say what you want about the beast, but man, that guy can keep a promise. Jack turned away, ready to begin his lonely fate through the world. Lucifer took pity on him and took a burning piece of coal to give it to Jack. Satan said that the piece of coal was to be used as a lantern, so Jack would spend eternity alone, but not in the dark. So Jack decided to take a turnip and card a smile into it, placing the burning coal inside and using the vegetable as a lantern. Many people claim to have encountered the ghost with his turnip. That's how Jack got the nickname Jack of the Lantern, later shortened to Jack O Lantern. Thus began the tradition to carve turnip, potatoes and other root vegetable as smile when Halloween was just around the corner. That until the mid 1800 when immigrant from Ireland came to North America and discovered a new vegetable, pumpkins. Can you imagine having spent the last 17 Halloween carving turnip and potatoes and now you have a pumpkin right in front of you and you're like, man, that must have been a pretty brutal transition, that's all I'm saying. Pumpkin are larger than potatoes and turnip and they are honestly way easier to carve because they're easier to empty. But the question is, what if they started with pumpkin and they went to turnip? Jack have actually carried the pumpkin because pumpkins are heavy, man. Oh. Wait a second. Uh-huh. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Good. It was a random subscriber. He wants me to shut the fuck up and go back to talk about Jack O'Lantern. He also said some pretty disruptive comments about the ugliness of my beard, but I'm used to it. So still today, the smile that is carved on a pumpkin is called a Jack O'Lantern in honor of Jack who tricked the devil not once, but twice with pretty much the same technique and is now condemned to wander hurt all alone, having his only lantern as a friend. In the meantime, Stingley Jack became a lovely legend from Ireland that I personally really enjoy. But we can ask ourselves, where is he now? Has his soul found redemption? Is he wandering through the hurt looking for forgiveness with his lonely coal as only source of light? Or is it truly the end of the tale 
of the Jack-O-Lantern. Remember that the legend of the Jack-O-Lantern is a very popular legend, so there is as many versions of it as there is tellers. Subscribe and activate the bell to be notified when a new video comes up. Then tell me in the comments, what legend surrounding Halloween do you love the most, especially at this time of the year? Follow my Instagram to support my hard work. And remember that in every legend, there is a part of truth. On that note, I'm gonna wish you guys a happy Halloween and as always, thanks for watching.